So basically, we have all of the 12 animations set up here. Uh, what we're going to need next is a animation tree. So if I click on player and add a child node animation tree in our animation tree in the inspector, we're going to go to tree root, click on the drop down and do state machine. Next, be sure to set up the animation player and the inspector for animation tree. So assign the animation player. So next we can right click on the graph and add in three blend space 2Ds for our three sets of animations. So the first one is going to be idle, and then we'll right click blend space 2D and rename this to be move or run. Or let's see, what have we actually call it? Walk. So let's, let's make it walk for consistency. And then right click blend space and we'll rename this to be swing. So when our animation tree starts, we want to start off in the idle animation. And then we want to go to the walk animation if our character is moving or back to idle if our character is not moving. We also want to be able to go to our swing animation if the swing button is pressed. So let's create a connection to swing and we'll create a connection back also to idle or walk. So walk to swing and swing to walk. For controlling the logic here, you can create a purely code based state machine that will change the animations for you. Or we can also set up auto advanced conditions. So these conditions basically encode, we just set something like idle when we want to switch back to idle as a Boolean or is walking if we want to switch back to walk. And we can have a condition like swing pressed when we want to transition to the swing animations. So you can have the logic actually occur inside of the animation tree. And that's what we're going to do for this character's player logic. So for going back from the swing state, let's uh, change the switch to at end. And the mode is going to be auto. And the condition we can set is moving. For connecting back from swing to idle, let's do something similar. Let's change the switch mode to at end and the condition auto. And we'll say the condition is idle. For going to the swing animation, let's set up a condition, which is going to be swing. And I'll set that for both of the connections between walk and swing, whether we're in the idle state or we're in the swing state. For idle to switch to walk, we have to set the condition is moving. And for walk to go to idle, we'll set up the condition idle. Now you would think that having a condition is moving if you wanted to switch back to idle, you would just have not is moving here. But as far as I've tested, that doesn't work. You have to have separate Boolean conditions for each of them. You can't just reverse a Boolean condition here. So uh, we have to have two separate variables, which is a little annoying, but it shouldn't really be a problem. Okay, so anyway, to go quickly over it, idle to swing uses auto swing condition. Walk to swing uses swing condition. Swing to walk is is moving is true. Swing to idle is idle is true. And idle to walk is is moving is true. And walk to idle is idle is true. And the only other thing is that for the swing to return, it has to wait until it's at the end of its animation in order to exit its animation. Okay, so let's go into the player script and let's set up some basic code to set those animation parameters. So if we're gonna be changing the animation tree parameters, then let's get access to the animation tree on ready var animation tree is the type animation tree and we're going to say equal to dollar sign animation tree which means we go in the hierarchy we find the node named animation tree and we assign it to this variable animation tree when the script starts on ready so uh, basically now we can set parameters on animation tree so let's make a new function and we'll say update animation parameters so if we want to set those parameters up we can go to the inspector of the animation tree expand expand parameters and you'll see those conditions that we typed in are actually going to appear here okay so now to actually set these parameters we have the parameters set up inside of our little animation tree if you look at the inspector and you expand down to parameters conditions you'll have these booleans that we set up idle is moving and swing so if you right click on these you can copy their property path so if we go into the code and hit Control v you'll see the path appears with parameters slash conditions and then the name of the condition to actually set it, let's delete that for a second and type in animation tree, which refers to the animation tree node that we are, are referencing up here at the top. And then in square brackets, put in parentheses and then control V to paste in the property that we're trying to set. So if we reference animation tree and then the path to the property, that means we're setting this Boolean value here. So for this value, we'll set it to true if a certain condition is met. And then the condition we'll use is going to be if velocity 
is equal to vector2 dot zero. Okay, basically we're not moving, then idle is going to be set to true. And also at the same time, we can set is moving to false. And also for the if, it's two equal signs to compare values, we're not assigning them. So let's also set is moving to false here. So I'm going to right click on is moving, copy the property path, and let's do animation tree, and then in square brackets, parentheses, control V, paste in the condition, and we'll set that to false. Okay, so otherwise, if the velocity is not zero, then we are moving and we're not idling. So let's take control C, control V, paste them down here, and just reverse the true to false and the false to true. Okay, so that handles those. For the swing animation, we need this to trigger if the swing button was just pressed down. Right now, we don't actually have a swing key. So let's go up to project, project settings, input map, and let's add a new action. So this will be, uh, I guess we'll say it's the use action. So we're using whatever tool we have in the hand. And then let's add a key to this. I'll use F on the keyboard. So just press F and then hit OK. And now F is going to use our tool. So let's close that. Okay, so now we can add the check for if the use action is pressed or if it is not into update animation parameters. So let's check if input, and this is kind of a global object you can reference. So you don't need to uh, set it up in the inspector with an export variable or anything. So we're checking if action just pressed and the action we're looking for is the use action. So put the string for that. So if the use action is just pressed, then we'll say animation tree, and then we need to put in the parameter path. So right click on swing in the inspector, copy property path and paste it in. So if use was just pressed, then swing is gonna be true. Otherwise, we'll say that uh, swing is false. Now this is like a pretty simple way of doing it. We could also like have a timer where after 0.25 seconds of a button being pressed, we would still say that swing is true, uh, but this should at least get us going for getting these conditions to be set. Now, one thing I do want to make sure is that the animation tree is actually active when our player starts. So we can add a ready function, function underscore ready. And when that happens, we can say animation tree dot active is true. So when our script starts, the animation tree will be turned on to active and we'll make sure that it's actually running. So now for these animation parameters to actually update, we still need to call update animation parameters sometime in our script. So we could use the normal process function for that, I think. So let's do function underscore process delta, and then just do update animation parameters. So let's go ahead and hit play and see if anything actually happens when we move around. So as you can see, visually speaking, nothing's happening yet. So one way we can check why that might be occurring is going to the scene view while the game's running and click on remote. So in remote view, we're looking at the currently open game and we can drill down to the game level and look at the animation tree of our player. So if we click on that, you'll see the conditions being set here. If I start moving, is moving actually gets set to true. And if we stop moving, idle is set to true. So the conditions are working, uh, but the animations are not yet. And the reason is that we simply haven't set up the animations inside of our blend spaces. So exit the game and go back to the animation tree and take a look at the animation state machine here. And we need to open up each of these blend states or blend spaces and edit them. So inside of a blend space, we have a 2D graph and, and the animation tree will automatically select which animation to play based on how close to the value of the nearest animation that we happen to be. So if you click over here, to create points, that's how you add an animation to the blend space. So click on create points, and then I'm gonna click on the far left in the center, and then add a animation, and we're looking for idle left. So that is going to be at position zero. So that's gonna be at position zero for Y and negative one for X. Um, now we can go down here for the idle right. Let's go to the far right over here, left click, add animation, idle right. For the top and bottom animations, because I want left and right to be prioritized, I'm going to change the max for the Y to 1.1 and the min for Y to negative 1.1. So basically, if we press two directions at once, it'll end up coming closer to the left than it would to the top if our input is somewhere up here, because 
we're putting the y value further away than the x value. Anyway, let's go to the top here, left click, add animation, idle up. And then down here at the bottom, left click, add animation, idle down. So left click on each point and make sure their values are correct. So up here, this one's 0, 1.1, that's correct. The bottom one is a negative one. So we want to pull that further down to be negative 1.1. And then on the far right, we have one zero. And on the far left, we have negative one zero. So now we set up the other blend spaces just like this. So go to the walk blend space and we're going to put 1.1 up here at the top, negative 1.1 at the bottom for the Y values. Let's add in the animations with create points, left click, add animation. So we want walk left over here on the right is walk right. And then at the bottom, walk down and at the top, walk up. Okay, let's go back to the root, do the same thing for swing. So set the Y max, Y min to 1.1 and negative 1.1, create points, add in the animation. So walk up, walk down, walk right, and then over here is gonna be walk left. Okay, now these blend spaces, how do you set the X, Y values inside of them? So it's very similar to how we set up the animation parameters. If we click on animation tree, you'll see that there are blend positions for the idle, swing, and walk blend spaces. So we simply need to set the blend position for each of those uh, as we update our character script. And how we're going to do that is we get the direction that our character is moving and we set the blend and we set the blend position to that normalized vector direction. So right click on idle blend position, copy property path, which is going to come in here to update animation parameters. So we'll do animation, uh, animation underscore tree, square brackets, quotation marks, paste in the path to the blend position. And we're going to set that to the input direction. So up here in physics process, we were getting that direction as a local variable. Let's actually make this a script wide variable. So I'm going to remove the var here. Then I'm going to go up to the top and type in var direction is a type vector two. It'll default to vector 2.0 before we start doing input. And we're going to update it every time in this physics process here. Uh, we do also need to remove this typing of the variable since that's now up here at the top. And once you do that, it should go away. So we're setting this variable whenever we update our physics process now. And this is already a normalized vector. So we just need to take the direction and set the blend position equal to that. So equals direction. And we need to do that three times for swing and walk as well. So let's copy this, paste it, paste it. And for the parameters, we can just type in here, swing. And down here, we'll do walk. So save that. Whenever the direction is updated, we're basically also going to update the blend position for all three of these blend spaces. So if we hit play now, we can see that the animations do change, but it doesn't entirely appear to be uh, correct here. So let's check the animation tree and make sure that everything's set up correctly. So in animation tree, let's edit the idle blend space and let's look at each of these nodes. So down here is idle down, idle up, idle left and idle right. Okay, and let's check walk. So we have walk up, walk down, and this one should be down here to negative uh, 1.1. Okay, up there is positive 1.1. Over here is walk right, walk left. I think we actually need to inverse the walk up and the walk down since up is actually down on the Y axis. So this should be walk down and down here, this should be walk up. So you can just change that in the inspector. Okay, let's do that for all of them. This should be idle down and this should be idle up and then swing. This should be swing down and then up here should be swing up at the bottom. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, also, for the blend, you want to set that to discrete. We're not trying to blend between the values here. We're trying to have it, once again, like the animation player animations. We're trying to instantly jump to each of these values. So make sure that your blend spaces are set to discrete mode. That's the other problem that's occurring right here. So discrete, discrete, and the walk should be discrete as well. Okay, let's hit play again and see if that's any better. So left, down, right, up. Okay. The walk animations are switching correctly. And whenever we let go, we're actually switching back to facing the left on the direction. And that's because it's setting the direction to uh, vector 2.0. So as a condition for setting the direction, we should actually put in here if direction does not equal vector 2.0. So if we don't have any input, then we shouldn't update the direction parameters. 
for the blend positions. So now if we hit play and we do up, down, left, right, that should clear up the idle animations. So that is looking much more correct here. Another minor issue we need to clean up is that when we press the F key to do the swing, but we're facing left and right, it actually plays the walk animation, but up and down work fine. That's simply because I messed up and I set the walk animation inside of swing instead of the swing animations. So if we click on the left point over here, we can see the animation is set to walk left. That should, of course, be swing left. And over here on the right, it's set to walk right, which it should be swing right. OK, now with that, if we go in here, we can test all four directions. Swing left, swing right, swing down, swing up. Okay, so the animations for our character are pretty much working correctly. Uh, one thing I want to change, though, is that the character moves way too fast. So we're probably going to slow him down by at least half. So let's jump into the player script. And I'll pull this down here. Let's go to the top, and I'll make his base speed 100. Let's try that. Make sure it updates in the inspector as well, since this is an export variable. Let's hit play and test that out one more time. Okay, yeah, this seems much more like an appropriate speed for the character. We could even slow it down a little bit further and make it something like 80, but I think that this is uh, pretty good for testing.